we're going to look at the 2017 AP Chemistry FRQ question number six and this has to do with uh, solubility products KSP. Answer the following questions about magnesium hydroxide at 25 degrees Celsius the value of the solubility product constant KSP for magnesium hydroxide solid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 11. So that's a very small number which means that this is not a very soluble compound. Calculate the number of grams of magnesium hydroxide, molar mass is 58.32, that is dissolved in 100 milliliters of a saturated solution of magnesium hydroxide at 25 degrees. Well, here's our equation. So, you know, just the fact that it says KSP, that implies magnesium hydroxide uh, dissociating into ions slightly. And what we're going to do is I make an ice box, and I like to use the ice box because I use this to define solubility. I'm going to say X is the amount of magnesium hydroxide that is going to dissolve in order to get a solution that's saturated. So it means X of that is going to dissolve. That's my change. And I'm going to end up with zero. And other than that, I'm not going to use this column. So uh, in my solution, I started with zero molar magnesium hydroxide and zero molar hydroxide ions, magnesium, I'm sorry, magnesium ions and hydroxide ions. So if X of this goes away, then I'm going to form X uh, molar magnesium and 2X for my hydroxide. So at equilibrium or at my saturated solution, this is going to be X and this is going to be 2X. Those are my concentrations um, of my solution of my ions. So I'm going to substitute those into my KSP expression, so this becomes X, this one becomes 2X, and because of the uh, the 2 up here, that's squared. So this 2 has a double effect that makes it doubled and squared, and that all equals 1.8 times 10 to the negative 11. Now I want to solve for X, because X is my solubility, the concentration of magnesium hydroxide I could possibly get, and so this is going to be 4X cubed, equals 1.8 times 10 to the negative 11. Divide both sides by 4. And I want x, not x cubed, so I need the cube root of this answer. And when all that is said and done, we get 1.65 times 10 to the negative 4. So that is the solubility, that's the concentration I can get for this reaction. Now, go back to the actual question. Okay, the question says, if I had 100 milliliters, let's make that 0.1 liters, now I know my molarity here, so I can say for every 1 liter, I get 1.65 times 10 to the negative fourth moles, and that's moles of magnesium hydroxide. And for every one mole of magnesium hydroxide, I can figure how many grams that is. But luckily that was done for us. So up here, 58.32 grams. So 0.1 times this times this here. Okay, let's get an answer. 9.6. Times 10 to the negative 4 grams of magnesium hydroxide. Okay, this is worth two points. So if you get to this answer, then you've got two points. If you didn't get to this answer, if you at least figured out the solubility, then that was worth one point. So, so far, so good. Now, Part B, the energy required to separate the ions in the magnesium hydroxide crystal lattice into individual magnesiums and hydroxide ions, as represented in the table below, is known as the lattice energy. So they're defining lattice energy, uh, lattice energy of magnesium hydroxide. As shown in the table, the lattice energy of strontium hydroxide is less than the lattice energy of magnesium hydroxide. Explain why in terms of periodic properties in Coulomb's law. Well, Coulomb's law, remember that's, you know, uh, Q1, Q2 over D squared. Okay, there's a constant. So the force of attraction between two charged particles has to do with their charges and their distances. Well, 
Here we have magnesium, okay, 2,900. Strontium is less, 2,300. So why is this one less than the magnesium? Well, first thing, we notice here that strontium in the periodic table is farther down than magnesium, so we know that strontium has a larger radius, okay, than magnesium does. So if we just state that, we just earn one point. The fact that strontium is larger than magnesium, or saying magnesium is smaller than strontium. That's worth one point. Okay, then, why does that make a difference? Well, in these compounds, then this distance, you know, the charges are the same. They're both 2 plus for the uh, ions, these positive ions, and they're both minus 1 for the hydroxide. So the charges don't make a difference. It has to do with the distances. What distance are we talking about? We're talking about the distance between a magnesium ion and hydroxide ions, okay, that distance versus the distance of strontium ions and hydroxide ions. So that distance, so distance here is smaller, distance here is larger. Because the distance between the strontium and the hydroxide ions is larger than the distance between the magnesium and the hydroxides, that's why the lattice energy, according to Coulomb's law, is smaller for strontium. Okay, the farther apart they are, then the less attraction is going to be felt. And so the less energy it takes to disrupt that crystal. And that's the two points. One point for saying that strontium is larger than magnesium. And the other part is for citing the distance between the ion, strontium ion and hydroxide ion. And students had to be very, very uh, uh, careful about you know what they were talking about. The distance between what and what, those two particular ions. Now, one little thing that I did notice when we were uh, grading these is that some students said calculate the number of grams of magnesium hydroxide that's dissolved in 100 milliliters of a saturated solution. This is uh, saying, you know, you have a saturated solution. How much magnesium hydroxide is in there? Some students misread that, and they said, oh, you can't put any more magnesium hydroxide into a saturated solution. And it's not saying we're starting with a saturated solution and trying to add magnesium hydroxide. We're saying, you know, if you have a saturated solution, how much uh, magnesium hydroxide is inside there? So they no, there are no points if they said, you know, you could not add any more magnesium hydroxide. So the question is, read the question really carefully. So this is question number six.